Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. My name's Britt, and I am an alcoholic. (laughs) Where do we start? Well, birthdays. Happy birthday to those who took a cake tonight, and to the 90-dayer, and to the newcomers, and to the relapsers. Welcome. Um, Those are important, guys. All right, so welcome. I have a sobriety date of August 18th, 2016. Um, My home group is Progress Rather Than Perfection on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock in La Mesa. Um, I just got asked tonight by Jeff last minute. That's a really good idea to just spring that on somebody. Yeah, it makes it it that much better. Um, So my story starts... Um, Well beyond before alcohol and drugs, um, drugs were a part of my story, I'll call it synthetic euphoria, how about that? Um, I felt, like Antonio did, very much irritable and discontent um, in my own skin. Um, At a young age, I remember, like, needing outside validation, like, not understanding, like, I, I don't know, I guess... My family household, I'll start with that. Like, it wasn't super loving. Like, my parents fought a lot. And um, I don't know. I felt like I was withheld love a lot, you know, like most of us. And um, so I needed outside validation. Like, I was constantly looking for um, other people to be my friend and love me and like me. And that continued throughout, you know, up until I got sober and sometimes still today. But um, I'd say I remember at a very young age, like, not having that fear factor, if you guys know what I'm talking about, like getting discipline and like not giving a fuck. So, um, I don't know. I remember also like feeling, okay, my parents would discipline me. And I I remember like I'd get in trouble for like the same things my friend down the street would get in trouble for. And I'd watch their reactions and their reactions would be like, sad, right? Like crying and like, daddy, no, I'm like, I won't do it again. And I'm like, okay, I better act like that. Like, I'm okay. I'll act like that. And okay. I'll act like that. Yeah. Cool. And you know what I mean? And, um, I just didn't care. Like, I don't know. It just never faced me. Nothing faced me. And like throughout most of my, my like life before alcohol and drugs and like during that, like I'd be in the most like shitty situations and I'd be like, I just don't understand. Like why I don't feel anything, like, why consequences don't bother me, like, why doesn't being in juvenile hall bother me, why doesn't having a PO bother me, why isn't taking drug tests and, like, having to, like, you know, deal with the law, why doesn't that bother me, you know what I mean, and, um, why doesn't it bother me when my dad's crying, I've never seen him cry, my mom's, like, trying to find me, and, you know what I mean, like, why am I running away from home, like, none of that stuff bothered me, you know, and, um, I don't know if anyone can attest to that, but, um, that was kind of my mentality, and, um, I guess there, there lies no structure, you know, and that's what this program has given me, and I'll talk about that later. Um, but uh, so growing up, I moved around a lot. I went to 11 different schools. I was a Navy brat. My um, my dad, we stayed in California primarily. My dad did a lot of his travels prior to, like, having the kids, my sister and I. And um, with, with that, I became very good at, like, uh, making friends. But I didn't become good at keeping them because people were only in my life for a short period of time. So I got used to that. Um, I think middle school, middle school, I was bullied a lot. Um, I'll go back and forth between a lot of things, but um, stay stay with me. Uh, I was bullied a lot, like I think most of us, and um, I say like like being bullied definitely gave me thick skin. But um, um, going into middle school and high school is when like the alcohol and drugs came in. You know, um, like I said, I was always pretty uncomfortable. But I remember when if anyone wanted to hang out with me, um, take me to a party, I would say yes. Like, it didn't really matter. Like, I didn't have a standard. I didn't have, like, values, you know? So, um, I would go. And with, with, at those places is alcohol, is marijuana, is cocaine, and whatever else. And, you know, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm trying these things. And I do remember, like, I do remember the first time I had a beer, it was Budweiser. And, um, I remember feeling comfortable, like, all of a sudden. And I didn't know that until I got sober, and they talk about how, like, you like the effect produced by alcohol. And it did give me that, like, I feel good. I feel sexy. I feel pretty. I'm not worried about what she thinks about me. He thinks I'm cute. And I'm funny. Awesome, you know? So, um, 
like I said, you don't know that that's what it does for you, but you just go on this like obsession and you start to like search it. So this became a weekend thing, like every weekend, like going to parties and hanging out with people you shouldn't be hanging out with, doing things you shouldn't be doing, um, with people you shouldn't be with. So, um, I really wasn't the best student either. Like I do hear some people telling their story about like being able to be good academic students and like being able to also drink and use the way they wanted to. That certainly wasn't my story. As soon as like I would have the alcohol inside of me, I didn't go to school. I just didn't show up. I never understood why people would just ditch class. Like just don't go. That didn't make any sense to me. But, um, so I didn't, I didn't go to school. And, um, when you're under 18, like, it's illegal, so the cops would try to find you, you know, and um, by this time I had gotten kicked out of, like, my regular high school. I, I grew up in North County, like, Rancho Bernardo area. I guess that's Northeast County, and um, I went to a continuation school. I got I got kicked out of school for being drunk as well. Um, don't really remember that day very well, but I was told that I wasn't wearing a bra, and I was hammered, and I fell off my chair. So, anyways, that landed me in a continuation school, and um, I... Uh, um, I did the same thing there. Um, I thought it was, I thought, you know, it was a school. It was a school's problem. Like, you know, there was 40 kids to one, um, one teacher. So that was the problem. Like I needed more one-on-one, you know, but, um, that didn't really matter because even though there was only eight kids to one teacher, um, I still fucked up. So, um, and that's when like heavier drugs ended up coming into play, unfortunately. Um, but like I said, like whenever there was a drug, there was a drink. So alcohol is very much a part of my story. And, it, and I, I started with it and I ended with it as well. So, um, yeah, got in a lot of trouble. Um, I did have a lot of fun. Like I, I can't say that I didn't, I did have a lot of fun, you know, but, um, unfortunately, like because I started using and drinking so young, like I developed this personality, um, that only, that, that I could only be when I would drink, you know? So, um, I didn't really know who I was, you know what I mean? And, and because I had drank so much and used so much and I was still growing, like when I would stop drinking, like I needed that even more because I was even more uncomfortable, you know what I mean? I never really let myself just be. So, um, I got introduced to AA mm, through family because we have it in our families. My aunts were both addicts, um, alcoholics. And, um, I really liked it. Like, I liked how loving you guys were. You guys are so nice. And, um, you know, people get one day sober and we're all clapping for them, you know, whereas a normie, you'd say it to a normie and they're like, get your shit together. Okay. One day. Right. You know? Um, but it was cool. I really, I really thought it was rad. And so, um, I wasn't really there yet when I went with my aunt, um, but I got a DUI, had to go, and I remember I got a court card, a court card, right? So I got a court card, and I remember thinking, well, well, that's cool, like, the judicial system's pretty jacked up and really unfair, and they made this program for people to, like, you know, communicate and, like, Get, get over their problems. I really thought, like, the judicial system had made AA, you know, but if I had just, like, opened the book, even the first few pages, and, like, saw how it developed over the years since the 1930s, like, I would have understood, you know, um, but I didn't open the book up until I was 29 years old, so, um, um, yeah, so introduced to AA, and um, that planted the seed for me, so I knew exactly where to go when I really did feel uncomfortable. Um, and I would go in and out of these rooms for, I don't know, 14 or 15 years, you know, um, but I would stay out and I wouldn't do the suggestions, which by the way, it's really, really cool that they call them suggestions. It's really a nice manipulative way of AA to let us know that, you know, we, we, we maybe have to do the steps. No, you don't do the steps. You just don't get the experience period. So it's a must guys. And you got to get a sponsor too. It's really not a suggestion. It's, it's a need, you know, you really don't, you won't feel good. You won't feel good internally until you actually have that spiritual experience, you know. Um, drugs and alcohol seem to get uh, be the ticket to get us here, but um, it's just another way to, to get to your higher self and to, you know, change your, change your life internally. Um, but so yeah, um, high school, got kicked out, went to all these different schools, and um, you know, I'm 31 right now. I've had like 40, I actually counted the other day, I thought it was 41, it's 43, I've had 43 jobs. So 
I found that out because I got a job at one of the hospitals down the street, and they made me put all of them, and I had to go to the IRS office just to just to find out, like, how many I'd actually had. Because so it was like, okay, I don't, I don't remember all these, like, blank spots, you know what I mean? It's hard to put a resume together when you don't remember half the jobs you've had. But my point in saying that, as funny as it is, is the fact that, like, no matter what, um, my, my addiction, my addiction is what, like, got me fired from most of those jobs. You know, I'd be really bitching in, like, out the gate, like, super good worker, on time. I'd be, um, you know, they call me, they come in early, I'd be that girl you know, but um, it wouldn't last very long. Like, and it got shorter and shorter. Like, it lasts a few months, and then it lasts a few weeks, and then it just wouldn't show up, you know? And um, it is hard to put that on a resume. Um, but needless to say, like, I never gave up. I did tap, tap dance around AA like we do. You know, this is a free program. They say it's, what, like a million-dollar program after all the things that you've tried, and then you finally are like, okay, I'll come here, you know? It really has everything and en- encompasses everything that you that you want, you know what I mean? A fellowship of people that I don't even know most of you in here, you know what I mean? But I feel like I'm so close to you. That's awesome, you know, because we're so vulnerable in here. It's bitching. Um, but where was I? Um, anywho, I, I got in more trouble, all that stuff. I won't go into too many, like, war stories, but because um, there were so many. But honestly, I just... I just remember, like, knowing that I had a problem really early. Like, it didn't take me until when I actually got sober, which was 29. Like, it was, like, in my teens, you know? And people would be like, you're so pretty. You're so young. You're not an alcoholic. As a matter of fact, like, one of my coworkers just told me that the other day. And, like, I was, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty open about it, you know? I'm open about it, one, because it helps somebody else. Not everybody can. I understand that people have a professional job that, like, just doesn't, doesn't promote that. You can't just be like, I'm, you know, this is my life. But, um... But I said, yeah, I had a pretty bad problem with it for a while. And he was like, he's like, you're too young. And I'm like, oh, people just really are so, like, they don't know. You know what I mean? And um, and I'm not. But all those little things enabled me, like the car I bought, like the job I had, you know, this like ex- these external things. Like I was crumbling inside, and I still, you know, was like using all these outside ob- objects to like make me feel good. Um, meanwhile, I couldn't pay things. Like I'm totally in debt, and um, just my life was in shambles, like, you know, I didn't really have friends. I couldn't really keep friends for very long. Like, it would only last, my friendships only lasted, like, I don't know, a couple of months. And then I'd be like, okay, they're going to find me out. Like, they're going to find out that I'm just not that great of a person. You know what I mean? And it was really all in my head. But um, but that brought me to being, like, an isolated drinker, isolated user. Um, and, like, still trying to be, like, a good taxpayer and like, working, you know, at the hospital and, I don't know, being this, like, good Samaritan, but, like, eventually, like, my lives would kind of collide, and I work in EMS, and um, that's emergency medical services, if nobody knows what that is, and I work at a hospital, and um, I remember during my addiction, like, I was working one day, and, like, somebody came in that I was using with, and obviously, when we're using, you know, when we're drinking, when we're doing stupid shit, messing up our bodies, like, we're gonna end up in the hospitals, you know what I mean? And so, he came in, and I, like, it's my section, like, I can't really avoid it, but I, I remember just sort of trying to, like, dodge him, because I just didn't want to be found out, you know what I mean? So, just always looking over my shoulder, and always having to, like, keep, you know, stories straight. It's really hard. I mean, it's pretty brilliant, if you think about it, like, wow, like, we're pretty, we're pretty on point with that shit, you know? Um, until we're not, you know? But, um, but yeah, so, um... I thought the military would change me. I was trying to get into the military. Um, I was uh, I was just trying to do everything else but, like, go to rehab. And I remember, like, when I worked at the hospital, um, people had kind of figured out that I wasn't really who I was. You know what I mean? They knew that I was on something. And they had called me out. Uh, really, actually, I called myself out. Like, I, you know when you... You just want to tell someone so bad because you know that you need help and you tell them like the wrong people and it's like vomit of the mouth. Well, this is what happened. So like one of my friends that I work with had stated like, you know, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, let's go talk, you know? So we go on a 10 minute break and I go outside the hospital and I'm up against, I'm on a bench and there's like the parking structure behind me and my voice carried. And I was like, I'm, I'm a drug addict. I'm an alcoholic. Like I'm, I'm, I've been drinking, you know, this morning before I came into work, and, like, a doctor had heard and, like, told on me, and honestly, I wish I knew who that girl or guy was, because I would shake their hand, but, um, but they called me out, but they couldn't prove it, so I ended up denying it, and I got, you know, uh, basically they said, if you, if you come, 
if you take a drug test and it's clean, we'll pay you for all the days of the investigation that, that it takes to, to, for you to get investigated. We'll pay you for those days you were supposed to work. And if not, we won't. You're fired. And I'm like, okay, drug test me, you know? And I passed. I knew I would. But, um, but those whole, like, three weeks, I tried to go to rehab and get fixed within, like, three weeks. I remember I went to detox. And then, um, I, you know, that insanity of thinking, like, within that short, short amount of time, like, you can just cure yourself. And you can't, you know? Um, I came back. They paid me for those times, for those days. And then um, I screwed up again. You know, doesn't really. <laughs> oh, that was perfect. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. Um, like what the consequences are. It doesn't matter. Like what got taken away from me. You know, whether it was like I don't know, a job or anything like it just didn't matter you know what I mean um I still I still didn't care and you still I was still able to kind of like convince myself that I was okay or that I wasn't that bad or um that it was somebody else's problem you know um but I ended up screwing up again and like I had this amazing burning bush moment but um I had gotten a final written warning and final written warnings guys that means like you don't get another chance but I got another chance um because I was charming and like I would manipulate people and you know I kept telling my job that it was like my my family my grandma my mom like I just need to take care of them and you know it's kind of shitty to use your family as a scapegoat but I did and that's just the kind of mentality that I had you know and um and I was supposed to be at work at 7, and I woke up at 8, and I had missed calls. And my job was like, you know, you got to get in here, dude. And I and I called him, and I was like, okay, I'll be right there. I hung up the phone, and I was like, you know what? This is bullshit. I'm not going to show up. I'm not going to show up. I'm not going to show up so they can fire me face-to-face. Fuck that, you know? And so I called the director, you know? So I called the director and um, of the department I worked in, and I was like, I was like, I'm not coming in. She's like, Britt, I know you're leaving tomorrow for Oregon, and you're coming on back on Tuesday. Like, just 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 come back and we'll deal with it then. And I'm like, cool. And I hung up the phone again and I started crying. And I remember thinking, I had these like full length mirrors, you know? And I remember looking at them, looking at myself and I was like, you're, you're a fucking coward. You're a coward. You're a piece of shit. Like, like what, where else are you going to go? You know what I mean? You, you can't put on enough makeup to make yourself even feel pretty anymore. You, you're losing, like, one of the best jobs you've ever had, and um, you're accepting that. Like, you're accepting that. And, like, I, I have so much determination, and like, like, mostly. You know what I mean? Most of the time, like, I'm super motivated, and, like, when I set my mind to something, like, nothing will stand in my way, you know? And um, and for me to just accept, uh, accept like, being fired like that uh, was just, like, wow, like, this is ridiculous, you know? And that's kind of when I think, how can I explain this? Um... I don't know. I surrendered in that moment, and here's how. So I had just kind of been curled up in a ball. I had, and I know it's Alcoholics Anonymous, but I had I had a line of, of, of some drug sitting right there, and I had a bottle of peppermint schnapps. And I wouldn't even normally drink that. It's disgusting, but that's how, that's where I got to, you know. And, um, <laughs> and, um, and I was like, do I do it? Or do I, you know, do I, uh, like, get, get help, you know? And um, I started crying. I was like, what the fuck do I do now? Like, what the fuck now? Like, what what now? You know, I, I don't know what to do. You know, I'm absolutely, like, I have nothing left. I have, like, no no tricks up my sleeve. And I think, like, at that point, the disease was kind of, like, pending. You know, that when you see that pending wheel? And my higher power was like, got her. Like, got her. You know what I mean? Like, that's all we needed is for you to back up for a minute and her to say something. And, like, you got to be careful when you have a God like that, like mine, because that's a prayer. And he answered. And, like, for me to try to get sober for so many years and for in that, like, in that moment to be completely changed is absolutely insane. Like, that's that's insane to me. I I, I get the chills. You know what I mean? And my heart's pounding just thinking about it. Um, it was like, I don't know, I think it's Iron Man that that has his suit come on like in sections. But as soon as I, as I said those words and like whatever happened, happened, like I felt this force field. It was impenetrable and I wasn't looking back. Ugh, it's, it's powerful to even think about right now. But when I used to go to the meetings, like in and out of my addiction, you know, um, before that, that moment when I'd come in and out of the rooms, like I would leave for the meetings and I'd cry. And now I see why I would cry because I wasn't done, but I didn't see that. I see that now. Cause that moment when that happened, I was good. Like I was so good. And here's what I did. 
It's funny because I knew that this is what I needed to do before. I knew I needed to go to sober living. I know I needed to like not let any stone be unturned and that I needed to just out myself because we're the last to admit it. Not even the last to know. Like we know we're degenerates at that point, you know, but, but I was the last to admit it to myself. So I ended up like, Instead of waiting till Tuesday, I, I marched into my uh, my director's office. I looked like shit. I smelled like shit. I hadn't brushed my teeth. It was just like, I was a wreck, you know? Rightfully so. That's where my addiction took me, you know? Um, and I just pulled her out of a meeting, and I was like, I'm... I'm, I'm a mess. Like I, I drink like every day, like every chance I get, like when I get off work, when I get off my shift, you know, I work like three twelves and I'll have four days off. And that's the, like the insanity too, is like, I'll get to a point where I will work those three, three twelves. And I'm like, okay, like, I'm just going to have a drink tonight. Right. I just, I just work three strong, solid days. Like I finish strong, you know, I'm gonna go have a margarita, but I'm going to call a drug dealer first because those fuckers take forever. They're on their own time. You know what I mean? So by the time I'm good and drunk, I know that when I want it, they're going to be ready, you know? So, but I would think like within those times I would sleep, you know, I, I wouldn't sleep. So I would work that 12, stay up and binge for four days and have to go back to work. That's insane. Like that's just nuts. You know, that denial of telling myself that I'm going to be okay. You know, that I'm just going to have that one drink or two drinks or that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a good night's sleep. It's just, it's just nuts, you know? And, and how a 120 pound girl, four, five foot one could even like not ever end up in the hospital is freaking like a blessing. Like I can't believe that. And amount of drugs and alcohol I've ingested and like willingly not ate and willingly not drank any water, you know what I mean? For days on end and still like didn't die is insane to me. But anyhow, so, um, yeah, I left, I went to sober living. I did, I did drive to my parents' house and, um, in Oregon and, um, I just drove straight there. I, I don't know. Like God had my back, you know what I mean? Drove straight there. And I said to my parents, like, listen, I'm, this is what I'm doing. Like must've been super hard for a dad to, to see his daughter, like say all this stuff, you know what I mean? But I, I kind of made a disclosure. I was like, daddy, I love you. No matter what you would have done, I would have been, been like this. This is the girl that I am. You know, this is the type of personality that I have. You know, this is, this is me. I'm a, I'm a rebel at heart. You know what I mean? And I need guidance and I need structure because I don't have it. And no matter how much structure he gave me, he's very, like the the Republican, like he's a cop, like Trump loving, like who ya man, if you know what I mean, okay? So he's he was really intense growing up, um <laughs> to say the least. But um you know, I saw it hurt him a little bit, but he was real proud, you know, and I was real proud, you know, and um I had a stepmom, I still have a stepmom, she's a lovely, lovely woman, and I think because of the fact that she was emotionally disconnected to me not being her actual daughter, I think that that's what gave her the option, or that's what gave her the capabilities over the years to be like, get the fuck out. You know, I see what you're doing to your dad. You got to go. And she stuck to that, you know. And uh, when when my dad would want to sit there and, and be like, here's some money, honey. You know what I mean? Or, or, yeah, you can stay. She'd be like at the door like, I don't think so, you know. And I always would tell my dad, like, you don't have a backbone. Like, I could only imagine. It's just hard to even say. You know what I mean? Like, you have no backbone standing up to your, you can't even stand up to your wife. You know what I mean? But, you know, um, truth is that woman saved my life. She really did. Just having that structure, having that, like, you know, she she didn't ever stray. You know what I mean? And I remember I was doing kind of good. I'd get, like, a couple weeks under my belt of, like, sobriety, and um, and I'd be feeling all good. You know, everyone's supposed to know, don't you know, that I'm a little sober. You know what I mean? I'm doing good. Can I come home now? And, um, no, nope, I can't come home now, but anywho, so I go and I, and I do this, I do these like camps, like I'm a camp counselor. I've been doing it for a few years, you know, so one of the things that I added to my life that made me feel real good, you know, anyhow, um, so I'm going to camp and I get a phone call and with these kids and like, she's like, your shit's on the doorstep. You're going to be back in a week. Cool. Hopefully it doesn't rain, you know? And I'm like that bitch, you know, that bitch. And, um, and it was still there when I got there, and and um, I found a place, like, found a place to go, lived in my car for a little bit, you know what I mean, um, whatever, and then eventually found a place, you know, to live, and found another hostage of a roommate, you know, that's right before I got sober, poor guy, oh, I have an amends to him if I can find him, but, um, anywho, so... I moved into a sober living. So I told my parents, I actually told my landlord too, and this was really cool. So I told my landlord and my landlord's husband was a doctor. Not really much significance there, but she happened to be um, an addiction therapist. I didn't know that. I'd known her for almost a year, you know, just as my landlord. And, um, and I said, listen, uh, Kaya, like, I know it's three days before the first, but I'm not going to be able to pay rent. Um, and I, 
it's because I'm an addict and, and I gotta get, I gotta get help. Like, I would have never, I don't know, I just would have never said that. You know what I mean? Like, these words are coming out of my mouth and I'm like, stop, <laughs> don't say anything. You're not, you're, you're not gonna place to live, you know? But it just kept coming and, um, and all of a sudden, like, and, you know, I was on the ambulance for a little while because I'm an EMT and, um, when I pick people up from like halfway houses or, um, sober livings, I would, um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I would be picking people up that were ODing, you know? And um, so when it came time for me to get sober, I was like, shit, you know, is this going to be, is this going to be like this for me, you know? Are these, are these places even regulated? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and the truth is, let's be real, guys, some of them aren't, but a lot of them are. You know, there's a lot of really bitching sober livings out there. You just got to do a little due, 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 due diligence to find it. But um, I got lucky because I looked at one, and it was a little too far out there. And uh, then I looked at another one. It was the second one I looked at, and uh, I was just like, you know, this is it. I got to do it. I don't have much time. You know what I mean? I don't have much money. I don't have much time. And so I actually borrowed money from a friend, his dad, and... Um, and he got me in, you know, like all these things really just kind of like, I don't know, worked out real nicely. You know, when I had, I forgot to tell you when I had told my landlord, she's like, well, it's three days before I'm going to obviously have to consult with my husband, but, um, but I'll call you tomorrow. And when she called me, she's like, you've paid your rent on time every month. So you're good. Go get sober. It's like, what? You normally have a fee. You know what I mean? You're not giving someone a 30 day notice. So that happened. And then like the sober living happened and I didn't have any money. And like my friend's dad helped me. You know what I mean? It's just all these things. It's just like when, when surrender, it just, just from surrendering and like, you know, guys, I'll, t- I'll tell you, it's taken almost, I mean, I'm a little over two years sober and that's cool. Like, it's real cool, but it really doesn't mean a whole lot if you're not working a bitching program of, like, spirituality, you know what I mean, and talking and praying and meditating and just doing the suggestions, really, um, because we all know we've seen people with 20 years that you wouldn't even want their sobriety, you know? Um, either way, um, it's taken me almost two years to get to that relationship with a higher power that, that I have today. Um, I acted as if, or fake it till you make it, however you want to say it. That's kind of how I, how I acted. And really, it wasn't hard to act. I mean, it was hard to feel, you know, like, cause I, I was still like trying to get rid of a lot of feelings and, and uh, uncover a lot of, um, I don't know, the callus that I built up from the world, you know, I wanted to keep you away from me, you know what I mean? Um, and sometimes I can still feel that. I'm working on it, you know what I mean? Um, but it's okay because I got you guys and I got this program and I know eventually it'll be okay. Um, it'll always be okay, even if it's not. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, like the higher power thing, it, it took me almost two years, but, um, but it feels good. And I realized that it is a feeling. So we like, I try to, I try to like paint a picture of what my higher power looks like. And, um, I don't know, like when I pray, I'd like have this view, but it would always kind of be different. Like some days it'd be like, I'd, I'd like pray and I'd, I'd think of like, do you guys know Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now, the book The Power of Now? Anyway, it's a really good spiritual book. Some days like his old ugly face would be popping in my head and like, it's like, well, you know what, whatever. He's, he like, he represents something good. And so I think that's what it, you know, that, that's all good. But eventually I realized it's a feeling. And, um, that wasn't until like within the last like five or six months that I realized like, oh, when I'm uncomfortable, when I have anxiety and I'm like super depressed, like that's when I'm not connected to source. And that's when I need to get on my knees and that's why I need to pray. And when I am connected, I feel clarity, discernment. I feel confident, you're not cocky, feel confident. And I, I don't know. I just want to be of service to others. You know, that's how I can tell the difference today. Um, Lots of life gets in the way, you know, sometimes. And, um, I think it's, it's supposed to be like that too. Like I, I, with the character defects thing, you know, I don't even think that they necessarily go away. I feel like you just gain this really bitching awareness of them. So, you know, you can nip it in the butt, like when they pop up, because honestly, a lot of our character defects are helping other people grow too. You know what I mean? We're, if we were all perfect, I hate that word. It's a very personal word, but if we were all like, you know, absolutely perfect, then, you know, we wouldn't have anything to, we wouldn't have any goals, you know what I mean? To, to, to reach for as far as like personal growth, you know? But, um, so when I got into sober living, you know, there were, there were, there were rules, if you will, you had to get up at a certain time and do a chore and that, um, that, that held accountability and, um, you know, structure. And then you had to have a sponsor and you had to go to three meetings a week. And, um, so I did that, you know, and this was one of my meetings that I came to. I actually got sober at this meeting. So it's really an honor to be asked to speak tonight because this was, this was like, I sat right over here, you know, first before I got sober, I sat right back there. But, um, (laughs) but, um, 
don't we all, you know, we gotta, we, we gotta do what we gotta do to at least get in here. We just gotta get in here, you know? Um, so, so I went to my meetings and they said, get a commitment. So I got a commitment. I got a couple. I'm a little overachiever, you know, so I got a couple and, um, then you realize you can't hold on to all of them. Then you got to give one up and you realize, you know, self-care is a new health care. And you got to kind of like, OK, let's let's have some balance here. One commitment here is good. Go to these meetings, be of service to people, meet with your sponsor and just work the steps. You know, I took a while to do. Well, my first round was I don't know. I did sit on my laurels. I guess uh, sitting on your laurels ranges uh, differently for everybody. You know, I waited a few months to finish my fourth step and uh, that made me feel pretty uncomfortable. And I think that's what I needed. And every time I feel irritability and discontent, it's what I need because then it gives me that charge to like continuously like move forward and face what I'm like avoiding, you know, um, pretty bitchin' like, um, the fourth step. I mean, that's really when pen comes to paper. Um, I think you guys know that. And it's really not, I don't know. I, I'm not, I'm not going to take your inventory and say that it's not scary because it is really hard to look at yourself and see the way you've been treating people. It's really uncomfortable. Really, I'm that big of a dick. Sober fuck, you know? I don't like that. I don't like that. I always wanted to be this like Mother Teresa, you know, that's like so nice to everybody, you know? But truthfully is I'm a little bitch sometimes. That's the truth. <laughs> I remember my friend Andrew here, um, when I was, uh, when I first got in here, um, I was smiling all the time, right? And I think I was right in the back over by the flag outside there, and I said something to him, and I was like bitching about my sober living. He's like, I didn't think you were that nice all the time. There you go, you know. Finally saw a little bit in me. Um, but anyways, <laughs> that was a relief to know that, like, someone accepted me too. You guys accept us, you know? I mean, I, lo- I love that. I love that we can be raw and real. And, um, and still, you say we love you. You know what I mean? Keep coming back. I used to hate that shit. Keep coming back to what, you know? But, but you know, I get it. I get it. Keep coming back. Uh, so anyways, yeah, and then the fourth step, you know, you really get to see your part, and you get to see all these random resentments that really, they're different. They're, they're different, you know, but um, your part's the same, and the way you act is the same, and the way you feel is the same in every single one of them, you know? So you see this pattern, and then once you know what you know, guys, you just can't unknow it, and that that is where... Um, You know, ignorance is bliss, but that's when it stops being blissful, you know? Um, And then really all the rest, I mean, it just kind of goes fairly smoothly from there. I mean, I'm still making a lot of amends. You still got to find people, you know, and you got to be willing to make them. You know, I chose chose to make amends that I knew I was going to get a really good reaction. Uh, feedback is always what people are afraid of. At least I'll speak for myself. I'm afraid of feedback. I'm afraid of rejection. I'm afraid of abandonment, this, that, and the other, right? So I don't want someone to tell me, you know, that I hurt them. I don't want a guy that I screwed over to tell me you're kind of a C word and like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. You know what I mean? And I had that happen. Um, that's painful. And, um, yeah, prayer and meditation. I will say this, that, um, it's a skill. It's a skill to learn to pray. It's a skill to learn to meditate. I notice when you're, when you're praying, you're talking, and when you're meditating, you're listening. You know, and there's times where I'll be sitting there waiting for someone to real talk to me, but nobody's talking to you. You know, you just pray for, like, discernment, pray for clarity, pray for what you, you know, pray for the things that you want to, to be able to be for people, you know, um, and to be a vessel for God to be able to do his work, you know what I mean? Her work, whatever, whatever your God is, the universe, source energy, I don't know. Um, but it just can't be you guys. Cause honestly, like baseline us, like we're dirt bags, you know what I mean? We make really shitty decisions, you know, I'm super selfish at heart, you know, naturally. And I hate thinking that, you know, I mean, I think you guys have heard this, like, I would think about me, think about me, think about you thinking about me, and then think about me a little more. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Um, but, yeah, so I just took the suggestions. I got a really bitchin' sponsor. It's funny, actually. She um, she didn't. She said no to me, and I don't like that word at all. <laughs> Not a big fan of no. <laughs> no means yes to Brit. So she... Um, <laughs> She had said, no, I'm too busy. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. So she made the mistake of inviting me over for coffee. And I brought my book and my fucking peppy-ass attitude. And I was like, can you sponsor me? And she's like, honey, I said no. I was like, well, honestly, I'm going to do this. Like, I'm not going to mess around. I'm so freaking ready. And she was like, all right, all right. You're annoying as fuck. I will, I will sponsor you, you know? <laughs> That's pretty much what she looked like. But, um, you know, we, we, we had a really good relationship, like, you know, if you guys are really scared to get a sponsor because you want to eat that perfect someone, you know, 
go on eHarmony to do that because you're just trying to get someone to talk shit to your addiction. You know what I mean? This is really, this is real, this is real shit. You know, like this woman and this man that you're going to have this relationship with is going to be so damn real with you, you know, and, um, probably won't be more brutal to you than you've been to yourself. Let's be honest. And, um, yeah, we, she's still my sponsor. Um, I'm going through the steps again and I just finished my fourth step. Um, Again, I sat on my laurels again with that one, but I needed it, you know, um, and um, it's a lot more painful this time because, like I said, I had that callus for so many, so many years, you know, I just want to keep you guys away from me um, that I can see things differently now. Like my first round was just like, let's get it, let's get her done, you know what I mean? And then the second round is just like, shit, that hurts, you know what I mean? And I missed a lot of people. I'll tell you something with my fourth step that... Uh, the way that I felt was, um, I'd write down a couple of resentments. She goes, how old are you, honey? You know, I said, I- I'm 29. She's like, yeah, bullshit. You have four resentments, four resentments. I know you have like four against me right now, you know? And, um, I was like, yeah, I guess you're right. And my thing was, is that I felt like I understood why people did the things they did. You know, I understand that like he was molested or I understand like that they had a really shitty upbringing. And I really, I'd, I'd rather take on that pain than, than like, have to blame them for something. And she said, that's a victim mentality too, because you're taking on, you're saying that, you know, um, I don't remember how she worded it, but she worded it in a, in a way where it really backfired. And I was like, it really is. You know what I mean? Um, cause I'm wanting to sit, sit in my shit, you know what I mean? And not get rid of it. And she said that no one's going to audit it. Like nobody audits this four step. You know what I mean? We can burn it when you're done, if that's what you so choose. So, um, I got a lot of resentments after that. People, places, and things. Colors, shit. I hated pink. I hate pink. Here's why I hated pink. Because pink made me look, made me look sissy. And if I look sissy, then I wouldn't look tough. And if I don't look tough, then someone's gonna try to fight me. And I'm not a big fighter like Antonio, so then I'm gonna have to fight. Fuck. I hate pink. Yeah. So, <laughs> anywho, um, it got a little bit easier after that second round. And I got a lot more out. And when I got a lot more out, I had a lot more room for you. And when I have a lot more room for you. I feel a lot better because I'm not thinking about me so much. And, um, that's what this program's really about to me. You know, um, it's just about, I don't know, being of service to others. That's what we're here for guys. I mean, we're here on this earth. I mean, not just here in like AA and all the other anonymouses. like we're here to help each other. You know what I mean? We're not like just me. I'm not that big of a deal. You know what I mean? But like us together, like we're awesome. We're so awesome together as a fellowship. You know what I mean? We got to help people. We got to help the people out there too. Like, you know, if the people that, that needed help actually got it, we'd be having meetings every day, every hour on the hour at Qualcomm stadium. Isn't that so? I mean, that's how bad this is. You know what I mean? And God bless that I got sober and a lot of us got sober before this whole fentanyl thing. This thing's killing people like crazy. Anyways, that's a whole nother story. Um, but yeah, so I mean, how much time do I have, dear? Cool. Um, so yeah, um, did the steps and you don't just do the steps and be done, guys. Like it, it gets harder because like you ride that pink cloud, you know, and, um, and then the feelings start coming. You know what I mean? So when you get in here, you learn like the skills of, reaching out, picking up the phone, being of service, calling someone when you're thinking some crazy shit and like, you know, taking the power out of it. But then when like the ball really drops, you don't, you don't, I didn't really call anybody. Like I isolated myself even more. I remember at six months sober when I had realized that like I was this, I went to a a girl's rehab, a teenage rehab and I was telling my story and I was trying to explain to her how I was different people with everybody I met. She goes, Oh, you were a shapeshifter. I said, that's great. Yeah. I was a shapeshifter. So when I realized I was a shapeshifter, I remember going home to my sober living and you live with somebody else in the same room, you know, and I closed the door like it was my room, you know, and she's like, knock, knock. (laughs) Sorry. It's not your room. You can't be by yourself anymore. And I was like, fuck, you know, I was so pissed. I was just so pissed, you know, that, that I was this person. I didn't know who I was like that hurt, but you know what? It gets easier. And the way that we have been isn't who we are anymore. It's things we've done. And who, who knew guys that the shittiest things that's happened to us is the best things that's ever going to happen to us. You know, I hope that y'all can see that because it's the truth. Like it really is. You know, um, you guys have testimonies. We have testimonies that we can help other people save their lives. You know what I mean? Um, one of these kids in my rehab just died last week. Like I just freaking talked to this kid. Like it's crazy. It's just so crazy. You know what I mean? It's just so crazy. You know how deadly this is. And we treat it so lightly, you know what I mean? Um, 
take the suggestions. You don't really have to think for yourself right now. I mean, if you get a sponsor and you have a herd, you know what I mean? You just kind of follow what they're doing, you know? There were a couple couple people in this room when I first got in here that I followed. Some of them were guys and there were a couple females. And I just... I saw what they did. I mean, they, they did, they did the deal. Even if they wanted to maybe get in a relationship or they thought someone was attractive or whatever, like they still focused, they still reached out to people. And like, that's what you got to do. You don't have to, you know, you have any grandiose ideas, like talk to somebody about them. Okay. <laughs> All right. I just, please do that. Um, and like he said, moving within the first year, like don't do that. You know what I mean? But anyways, guys, I hope I'm not boring you too much, but Honestly, it's, it's been an honor to be here. Um, if, if anyone wants my phone number, and I will help them to the best of my ability. Um, you know, you help me as much as I help you. And um, God bless AA, really. Thank you for letting me speak. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.